brothers who are done with us, I can come close, inshallah. We'll begin shortly. I'm not texting, I'm just closing my phone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem, amma ba'd. Fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta lalimu al-hakim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتمه لنا بالخير يا فتاه يا فتاه يا فتح إن شاء الله we'll begin our program with a recitation of the Holy Quran so إن شاء الله we'll request Hafiz Abd to come and recite few ayats of the Quran إن شاء الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها قال أن يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها فأماته الله مئة عام ثم بعثه قال كم لبست قال لبست يوما أو بعض يوم قال بل لبست مئة عام فانظر إلى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنه وانظر إلى حمارك ولنجعلك آية للناس وانظر إلى العظام كيف ننشذها ثم نكسوها لحما فلما تبين له قال أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير وإذ قال إبراهيم رب أرني كيف تحيي الموتى قال أولم تؤمن قال بلى ولكن ليطمئن قلبي قال فخذ أربعة من الطير فصرهن إليك ثم اجعل على كل جبل منهن جزءا ثم دعهن يأتينك سعيا وعلم أن الله عزيز حكيم صدق الله العظيم Hafiz Zaid, Jazakumullah khairan for that beautiful recitation of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten our hearts with the Qur'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the love of Qur'an. Qur'an in reality is a book which is supposed to be loved and, and we are supposed to connect ourselves and our lives with the Qur'an in reality. You know? and, and whoever attaches themselves with Qur'an will indeed reach the salvation. This ayat of the Qur'an which is recited in front of us is only one ayat of the Qur'an which is Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 259. Alhamdulillah, for almost a year now, in the fourth Saturdays of the month that we meet together, we are covering this topic known as Qasasul Qur'an. As we know that Qur'an itself is a book sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a guidance to the humanity. 
And as I had mentioned this before also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every one of us many ni'mats and blessings in our life. To an extent that if we were to sit and count the ni'mats of Allah, we would not be able to. It is said in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a person on the day of Qiyamah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once mentioned this incident to Sahaba. And said, oh my Sahaba, there was a person from amongst the nation of people of Bani Israel. And this person lived in a place where there was no one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a tree of pomegranate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a fresh spring of water from which he used to eat from the pomegranate tree and he used to drink from that fresh water. To an extent that for 500 years continuously he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 500 years, after, after this when he passed away from this face of this earth, on the day of Qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, enter inside Jannah with my mercy. So this person says, how can I enter the Jannah with your mercy, na'udhu billah, when I have worshipped for 500 years? How can I ever enter Jannah with your mercy when I worship you for 500 years? So it says in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ordain and says that we will keep all of your ibadah and worship in one part of the scale. And on the other part of the scale, we will put only one ni'mat, one blessing, one mercy that Allah had given you. And which was the mercy and the blessing, blessing of vision and sight that Allah had granted you. So 500 years of ibadah in one place and the ability to see and watch. So to be put on one side, the ability of basarat to see. So it says that soon as the ability to see and the ni'mat of seeing was put on one side, the 500 years of ibadah started to fly in the year. That not even one ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can fulfill. To an extent that 31 times Allah reminds us in Surah Rahman by saying, which of the ni'mats of Allah will you not remember? Which one of you will, which ni'mat of Allah will you forget? So amongst the ni'mats of Allah that He has given us, He has given us intelligence in our mind, our brain. But our minds and our intelligence have also limitation. There comes a time that we cannot think above it. There's limitation to our intellect. No matter how, important, how smart, how intelligent you might get, there's a limitation to a human mind and intelligence. And what is above and beyond this intelligence is known as the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is granted to the prophets through revelation and wahi, which is the Qur'an itself. So which proves to us that the knowledge of Qur'an is above and beyond any intellectual level of a human being. No matter how intelligent that a person might get to. And subhanAllah, how smart that person is, but the Qur'an itself is above and beyond in ilm of anything and anyone. So in Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us many things. And amongst the things that Qur'an mentions to us is qisas. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself mentions in the Qur'an at some of the stories to be qisas and stories. But not stories of fairy tales, but stories of nasiha and advice. So alhamdulillah, over the past year or so, in the fourth Saturday of every month, we cover a, a, a series known as Qasasul Qur'an. The stories within the Qur'an and the lessons to be achieved and extracted from these beautiful stories that Allah has mentioned in the Qur'an. Because as we know that the Qur'an itself is a book revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single word of this book is full of nasihat and advice for the humanity. So the ayat of the Qur'an which is recited in front of us is verse number 259 of chapter number 2 which is known as Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this one verse of the Qur'an explains to us a story, an incident, a qissa, a waqi'ah, a qissas. And what is, the, what is the reason behind this incident? What do we extract from this? What is the lessons behind this inshallah? This is something that we will try to cover within the short time that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, أَوْ كَلَّذِي مَرَّ عَلَىٰ قَرِيَةٍ or like the one who passed by a town. First we will go over the literal meaning of this ayat and then we will go to the details. Or like the one who passed by a town and it was tumbled over its roof. So the entire locality, an entire vicinity where the people used to live with inhabitants, life, women and men, children, everything was alive. 
a person, we don't know as of yet who this person is, is walking by and he sees that the entire locality, the entire civilization of an entire area is completely finished to an extent that their roofs have fallen on top of their heads and the entire locality is completely deserted and finished. And this person sees this from his own eyes and he says, Oh, how will Allah ever bring it to life after this death? Meaning, how will these people who have totally been finished can be raised again on the day of Qiyam? How can it ever be that these people will be raised on the day of Qiyamah? And of course, this person was amongst the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to die for 100 years. The same person who was saying that how can this locality be raised on the day of Qiyamah? Right there and then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused this person to die for 100 years. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him again in this world. He said, meaning the angels, how long did you remain dead? The angel who came to revive him back said, how long did you die for? So at this moment, he says, the man said, it feel like I went to sleep for a day or maybe a part of a day. Then this angel who was next to him, next to him speaking, he says, no, indeed, you have remained dead for 100 years. Look at your food and your drink. And then he looked at the food and the drink that he had left behind. Lam yatasanna. It showed no changes. It did not become spoiled. It did not look bad. It was still as fresh as he had left it 100 years ago. At this moment, he was still surprised. And then he says, And thus we have made you a sign for the people. Look at the bones of... Uh, then he says, again he says, No change had come. And look at your donkey. Look at the animal that you were riding when you were traveling. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the signs of His greatness. Look at the bones, how we bring them together. So the food for 100 years is still fresh. And the animal that this person is traveling upon is completely decomposed to an extent that the bones have crushed and become into small little particles. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look at the bones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His Amr and with His order kun to be, it became the bones are joining together. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and clothe them with flesh. And then we put the meat and flesh upon that animal in front of, this eye, front of the eyes of this person. Then the ayat of the Qur'an says, when this was clearly shown to this individual from his own sight, this individual said, I know now that Allah is able to do all things. So briefly we understand a story of an incident, or a story of a person, individual, who is walking through a locality, we don't know who this person is, where he's walking through, but he sees the entire locality and civilization has been finished in one specific village. He sees that the roofs have fallen, he questions in his mind and says, how will these people be raised on the day of judgment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes and causes this person to die. For 100 years he raises up, the angel comes and asks, for how long were you sleeping or you were dead? He said, maybe half a day or one day. At this moment, he's reminded that no, it is 100 years. If you do not trust me, look at the food. It is still fresh because Allah has kept it like this. And look at the animal, the donkey that you were traveling. Look at it, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has finished it and how it will raise back to its life again. And after witnessing this thing with his own eyes, this person says, indeed, now I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do each and everything. Who is this individual and who, what is this incident speaking about? What is the morals and what is the Quran trying to explain from this incident? According to Ibn Asakir, Ibn Asakir is a person of history. He's a person who has written the history of Islam. And history of Ibn Asakir is very, very famous. So Ibn Asakir writes that the name of this person was Uzair Ibn Jarwa. Some narration says his name was Uzair Ibn Suraiq. Some have mentioned that his name was Uzair Ibn Samak. So all three narrations from different narrations that we find, his name is known to be Uzair. 
Now we understand that this person who was traveling in this locality was Uzair. Who was this individual? And as we all know that the name of Uzair has been mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Tawbah, verse number 30, and says, And the Jews say that Uzair is the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Christians are saying that Isa alayhi salam, Masih is the son of Allah. This is their saying with their mouth, resembling the sayings of those who disbelieved afterwards. And Allah's curse be upon them who they are away with the truth. So in this ayat of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also explaining to us that this individual Uzair was from amongst the people of Bani Israel. One quick short note, a story. In this ayat of the Quran in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the Christians were saying that Isa alayhi salam is the son of Allah. The Jews were saying that Uzair alayhi salam is the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we all know that why people said that Isa alayhi salam was the son of Allah. Because he was born without a father. And then they made a whole incident behind him and praised him to this level. But how come the Jews started praising Uzair alayhi salam to be the son of Allah? This is an incident inshallah we will speak about in just a moment. But one quick note I remember. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that the Christians and the Jews have always been fighting with each other about their beliefs. And the Christians have always been, been saying that the Jews never say the truth. And the Jews are always saying that the Christians never say the truth. So in reality, both of them are telling the truth. But in reality, both of them are lying itself as well. So the Christians are always saying that the Jews are lying. And the Jews are saying that the Christians are lying. So there's a very beautiful incident. It is mentioned that one day, his name, one of, one of the sheikhs of his time, Bayazid Bastami Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Anhu. A great sheikh of his time, very intelligent, very notable person. One day, Bayazid Bastami Rahmatullahi was walking in a street in a journey in which he saw a big gathering of, of so many Jews and, and a rabbi giving a great speech. So, Bayazid Bastami Rahmatullahi said, Let me go and sit and see what this person is speaking about. So, he went and sat in that gathering. So, the big rabbi who was speaking, he stopped all of a sudden. He would not speak anymore. So at this moment, the people are saying, why did you stop? So he said, one of the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu is here, and because of him, we cannot speak. One follower of Muhammad Sallallahu is here, that's why I cannot speak. So make him get up, and I want to ask him a few questions. So Bayazid Bastami Rahmatullahi got up. So this person said, I need to ask you a few questions. The rabbi said, that I need to ask you a few questions. So he says, go ahead. So he asked him 72 questions. I'm not gonna mention all of them because I, I don't even remember all of them. So he, he asked him a few questions. So he says, tell me one which does not have a two. He said, Allah. He says, tell me two which does not have a three. He says, day and night. He says, tell me three which does not have a four. He says, loh, qalam, the pen and the kursi, the, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is above the heavens. He says, tell me four which does not have a five. He says, Torah, Dabur, Injir, and Quran. He says, tell me five which does not have a six. He said, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. He says, tell me six which does not have a seven. He says, Allah mentions in the Quran, He made this earth and the heavens in six days. He says, tell me seven which does not have an eight. He says, Allah mentions in the Quran, He has made the seven heavens, He has not made the eight heavens. He says, tell me eight which does not have a nine. So he mentions in the, in the Qur'an that there are eight, eight angels who are holding the arsh of Allah and Allah mentions that there are, thamani, there are eight of them, there are not nine.